Hey everyone, welcome back to another KW2 video. And this time it is Christmas themed. We have got a lot of fun stuff in store for you. There will be more songs, another uh, family food related craft, and in a short Bible lesson all about Christmas lights. However, and, and before we get into all of that, I just want you all to know that Mr. Kevin and myself miss you all very, very much. It has been a super weird holiday season for sure, but made even weirder because we haven't been able to celebrate it together as a church family. That's how we normally would do things, but normal just isn't happening right now. There's nothing normal really going on anywhere, right? But remember that the story of Christmas is a story of hope. God himself took on flesh and was born into this world in a not so normal way. And because of his birth and death and resurrection, all of us who place our trust in Christ can be saved. So this, this Christmas, it might be weird, but we have still got hope. Things might not look the same as they normally do, but we've still got Jesus. And in my book, Jesus is all that we need. So, let's get this KW2 video started. Seek with all my heart, I'll find the one true God for all time, a true seeker, the God pleaser, a true seeker. If the world tries to change my mind with its words that are a lie, I will cling. And believe. I want to be a God pleaser. I need to be a true seeker. If I seek with all my heart, I'll find the one true God for all time. A true seeker. The God pleaser. A true Welcome back to my kitchen. In this installment, Chef Tilly and, and myself, we're going to be teaching all of you at home how to make another holiday treat. Uh, but this time it is not going to be pumpkin spice Play-Doh. Instead, we are going to be teaching you how to make church mice. So if you and your family plan to do some Christmas cookie baking, Maybe you can add church mice to the list. These are a lot of fun and they're really tasty too. So ready Tilly? Are we ready to teach everybody at home how to make these? What do you think? Take that as a yes. Let's talk about your church mice shopping list. If you guys are going to want to make these at home alongside of Tilly and I, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and buy a few things. And if you're making Christmas cookies, you might have a couple of these things, but, but some might be kind of out of the ordinary. So, so here is what you're gonna need to make church mice. Uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna buy is maraschino cherries. And you're gonna wanna make sure you get the type that have the stems still attached. And I'll say that right on the bottle. The stems need to be still there because those are going to be your mouse's tail. Then you're going to want to get some sort of chocolate chips. It can be milk chocolate, it can be dark chocolate, it can be white chocolate, it doesn't matter. However, get the chocolate chips that are the same color as the third item you're going to need to buy, which is Hershey's Kisses. And so if you get Hershey's Kisses that are milk chocolate, 
make sure they match with the chocolate chips. And same with dark chocolate and milk chocolate and so on. And the last thing that you're gonna need to buy is uh, sliced almonds. And so these sliced almonds, they, they sell them right at Meyer in the baking aisle. Uh, don't get whole almonds because these are going to work as your mouse's ears. You're gonna stick them in to make ears like you'll see in just a moment. And you might have a couple of things lying around the house which are also necessary to have for this too, like, like wax paper. You're gonna need some wax paper and you're going to also need a, a nice mixing bowl and at least a, a silver spoon or something like that to melt your chocolate in. Now, before you begin actually putting these church mice together, you're going to want to set up a prep station. So take your wax paper and just go ahead and, and cut a piece of that right off and, and lay it out right on your kitchen table or your counter or wherever you're gonna make those. These are, this is going to be the area where your church mice are going to cool down. They're going to dry and harden so you can eat them. You're also then going to want to take your chocolate chips and put them in that mixing bowl. So this is going to be the tricky part of this, this recipe, at least it is for me. Every time I try to microwave or melt chocolate chips, that's the goal of doing this here, I always burn them. So make sure when you put your chocolate chips in the bowl to, to melt them, you in, if you're doing it in the microwave, make sure you do so at lower increments, like 20 seconds or 30 seconds or even 10 seconds once it gets more and more liquidy, so you don't accidentally burn your chocolate chips because it really smells. And just as one chef to another chef here, here is a little secret on this holiday treat. What you're want, going to want to do before you actually even start with this is you're going to want to take your maraschino cherries out of the glass and let them dry in a paper towel for a little bit. Because if they're wet still, the, the chocolate, the melted chocolate is not going to stick to them very well. So again, make sure they're out and make sure they're dry before you start dipping them in your melted chocolate. And here they are, church mice. I've got one of mine here in this bowl, this Christmas bowl, and you can see they, they turn out kind of cute. They look a little bit like mice, right? I've, it's, got a, it's got a tail, it's got a head, it's, it's got ears, and it tastes pretty good. Um, and, and if you end up making these uh, at home with your family, I'd love to see how yours turn out too. If you make any other Christmas cookies or anything like that, we'd also love to see those as well. But send me a picture of it or put a picture on our uh, Kidsville and KW2 Facebook group. We'll see it there as well. But thanks for joining myself and Chef Tilly in the kitchen today and we'll see you soon. Yes, you love me, this I know, for oh, the Bible tells me so. Yes, you love me, this I know, for oh, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, this I know, he protects me because he loves me so. He will guide me because he loves me so. He will fight for me because he loves me so. And he died for me because he loved me so Yes, he loves me, yes I know For the Bible tells me so Yes, he loves me, yes I 
yes I know, oh the Bible tells me so, Jesus loves me, this I know, Jesus loves me, this I know, Jesus loves me, this I know. Have you been outside at night lately? Most people, at least in, in my neighborhood, have got their Christmas lights up. The house across the street from me has these, these two really big Baby Yoda Christmas inflatables and, and the one right next to me just has their entire yard decked out and really colorful lights that, that strobe. But, but even downtown Alpena has just tons and tons of lights out. They've got their big tree set up in the fountain and the streetlight poles have wreaths that glow green and white. I love Christmas lights. They're, they're one of my favorite things about this holiday. I, I love driving around when it gets dark to see all of the cool colors and all of the creative decorations, but, but Christmas lights, they remind me of something too. They, they remind me of that passage of scripture found in the book of John that says that Jesus is the light of the world. And I'd like to just take a short amount of time right now to talk about what that means. Have you ever thought about how just one single light from a bulb can, can make a once completely dark room visible? Isn't it amazing that even at night you can still walk around outside and, and see somewhat clearly if you have a flashlight or a lantern of some sort? Light is powerful. It exposes what might be hidden in, in the darkness. It, it reveals, it, it uncovers. And in, it, in the first chapter of the book of John, the fourth gospel in the New Testament, we, we learn that Jesus is talked about as light. So check this out. I'm going to read to all of you from the book of John, chapter one, the first five verses. So this is John one, one through five. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and apart from Him, nothing came into being that had come into being. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. When I was much younger, I really liked to play this game on my Game Boy called Donkey Kong Country. But when I was a kid, uh, handheld video games, they weren't backlit. So if you have a Nintendo Switch, when you turn it on, it, it lights up so you can see it in the dark. And if you or your parents have a cell phone maybe, that lights up too so you can see it in the dark. But when I was in third or fourth grade, Game Boys, they didn't have that feature. You actually had to purchase a special light that would plug into the charging port in order to see what you were doing at, at nighttime. And, and I didn't have this light thing. And I really wasn't supposed to be playing any games past a certain time of night anyway, but, but I broke the rules and, and I sometimes did. I would sneak my Game Boy and my Donkey Kong game into my room and I would stick it in the back of my nightstands and then wait until my parents went to bed to play it for a few hours after dark. But I didn't want to accidentally wake up my parents when I did this. I, I'd get in trouble if they knew that I was playing games. And, and I also couldn't just turn the light on in my bedroom when I was playing it either. But if I looked at my Game Boy screen in the dark, I, I would see pretty much nothing. I could hold it sort of close to my face and, and squint my eyes really tight. And I could sort of make out shapes that way. But I could never really get far using that, 
method. But a, a blanket over my head and a flashlight in my mouth did the trick. The light from my flashlight revealed the screen to me and I could actually see what I was playing. Now, I am not trying to teach all of you a creative way to disobey your parents with that Game Boy story. Uh, but what I am trying to say is this. Just like my flashlight revealed to me the screen of my Game Boy, Jesus reveals to the world what truth clearly is. God didn't want us to continue to walk around in darkness, stumbling over our sin. So he sent his son Jesus to reveal to us the way to salvation. There's a lot of stuff out there trying to get our attention. There's a lot of things that can easily tempt us into sin. There's a lot that is being distorted by darkness. But God's light breaks through that darkness. It exposes it for what it is. It then helps guide us down the right path. Through Jesus, through the light of the world, we can be saved. Next time you are out at night and see some Christmas lights, or the next time you are in downtown Alpena and get a chance to check out this year's tree, let the sight of that remind you of the one called the light of the world. And in that moment, Remember that the light of the world, Jesus himself, came to earth to offer you salvation. He came to help guide you into a relationship with God himself. Through his unusual birth in a cave filled with animals, his, his death on that cross and his resurrection from the grave, Jesus has made a way for you to have life with him for eternity. This Christmas, do you know the light of the world? Mm -hmm.